Hello, this is Pastor Jay. I'm excited to invite you to come over to listen to our broadcast on YouTube. Yes, Walk in True Christian Fellowship Church on YouTube. We have some great videos over there and you'll be able to listen to all the lessons and the podcast. So again, subscribe, like, and continue to comment and listen. This is Pastor Jay. Talk to you later. Peace. God bless you and welcome to Walk in Truth Christian Fellowship Church broadcast. We appreciate and welcome all of you, our listeners around the world. Stay tuned to hear an exciting word from pastor teacher, Dr. James Sutton. Chapter 7, but I want to go back to make it make sense. So let's start at 6. I preached last week. We're still talking about sanctification. Chapter 7 is sanctification, uh, and, and it's going to be an illustration, but uh, this is going to be a good example of how you should study the Word of God. Amen. So we're going to be in Chapter 6. I want free to start at 16. What's the last verse? 23? 23. 23. I want you to read from 16 down to the last verse. And then I'm going to have Frida start at 22 and read into chapter 7. So she's going to read. We're talking about sanctification, the, 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 the period in time to which you're being conformed into the image of God. Okay, That's all sanctification is. The sanctification is where you experience God. While you're being conformed, you're being changed. While you're being changed, you're having experiences. You don't have experience outside of the sanctification process. In the process is the experience. So Curlis is fasting. She's going through a process. In the process, she says she's hearing God. So it's real. It's so simple, but we try to make it so difficult. You know, and you don't have to necessarily go on a fast to hear God. You can go in his word and hear him, but you got to get to the point where you understand in the process, challenges, disruptions, Things happen, things go good, things go bad, things go horrible, death, life. It's, all of those are part of the, uh, the process because what God is trying to see is, do you see it from his perspective? He, if he's conforming you into his image, he's trying to conform you into thinking like he thinks, not like you think. Now, he wants that to be a choice of yours. You either learn or you don't. You either study or you don't. And, and what's, what happens with most Christians, they're no further along in understanding how experiences of God than when they first got saved and had all the zeal. Because see, when they had all the zeal, they was looking for God. But as we get older and become older saints, we lose our, our because we're in the flesh, we just lose you know, uh, this awesome look at God that we had when we first started, which we need to regain that. You know, and that's what the word does for me. It, 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 I'm, just, I'm just as excited as I was a decade ago about his word because I'm learning more and more. I don't know it all, but I've learned how to process it. And in the process of processing his word, I'm having more experiences with him. You know, calming experiences. Calm, peace. The, the, the peace he promised he'd leave with us. Yeah, because he overcame the world. I don't have to fight the world. I just have to walk in the peace that God has given me. <clears throat> a lot of us are fighting when we need to be walking in peace. Okay? All right. Romans 6, 16. Go ahead. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? Mm-hmm. But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed, and having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. Mm-hmm. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, mm-hmm. so now present your members as slaves to righteousness leading to sanctification. Stop right there for a second. So in that word presentation, present, that, that's what your choice is. When you present, when you present, 
when you present. You have a choice. What you gonna present? You gonna present your 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 members, your body, yourself, who you are to righteousness, or are you gonna present yourself to holiness? Whoever you present yourself, I mean to, 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 to sin, whoever you decide to present yourself to, you are that person's slave. You're not in the middle. And if you're in the middle, you're on the slave side. You don't get the, you, it's kind of interesting. You don't get the positive side unless you come all the way. Amen. See, the, the, the issue is we, in, in church, one of the things that people teach in church is this halfway middle thing. And that's damnable because God says his son died for all sin, so all of you who sinners need to come. Amen. You can't meet them halfway. You can't say you love God and present yourself to, to unrighteousness. Remember the volume knob. The volume knob, as you become more sanctified, you'll be able to drown out the slaves, the other sin side, the unrighteous side. Now, being sanctified is the process, and as in your sanctification, what you want to do as you present yourself to holiness, you also begin to consecrate yourself in holiness. Sanctification leads to consecration. You can't get consecrated without being sanctified. Amen. So you can't you can't get consecrated. You, you, you can't get consecrated. You can't you can't continue to lose what you do and expect God not and you claim to be His not to 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 judge you, punish you, or even bring take you up out of here. We don't know how much time we got left. We were talking about that earlier today. You know, Frida, we were talking about, and Avon, we were talking about Janelle. Janelle's 21 years old. Think about this. At 11 years old, half her life is gone. She didn't know it. But, but what we know now, by her death, at 11 and 10 years old, she was halfway home. Her walk, her walk home was imminent, meaning 10 more years, one more decade, she gone. Thank God she made the right decision. She got baptized. She gave her life to Christ because we led her to Christ. See, what we understand is it's not so much we love you if you could come and be with us all the time after you get, but our number one focus is that we led that girl to Christ. Now, how much we've seen her off and on beyond that? That has nothing to do with anything. She saved. And because she picked somebody that was not right, that's on her. But God still saved her. And her soul is saved. She never got to experience the sanctification process as we would, as we have. And she won't. But we know just like the thief on the cross, she's with Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Okay, go ahead and read. <clears throat> But when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. Uh -huh. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? So what fruit do you get when you serve unrighteousness? Anybody? Just give me some stuff. What fruit Shame. Shame. What else? Guilt. Guilt. What else? Sadness. Separation. Sadness. Separation. Well, anything else? Y'all doing good. Anything else? Confusion. Confusion. Because God is not the author of that confusion. Right. So when you was enslaved to sin, you got a whole bunch of stuff with that that was the fruit of sin, right? Mm -hmm. And the wages of sin is what? Y'all yeah. on point today. When I was in service Sunday, I was like, Ann, and y'all just froze. <laughs> okay, great. Y'all know. Now, 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 see, this is the danger about what y'all just said. You can't unknow. Yeah. Once, you know. Once you know, you can't unknow. You can't go back and say you didn't know. You remember she started off, don't you know? That's her first sentence. Don't you know? Yeah, y'all do know. So guess what? Go back to Romans 1. Man, you without what? Excuse. You without excuse, you know. But Paul knew too. He gonna, we're going to get to that point. But, but yeah, you still, you still are in this battle in your flesh because the old man is not dead. He can be dormant and left where he can't affect you, but he's not dead yet. Okay? He's not dead. And the, and and you know your number. Yes, sir. 
We ain't going to worry about the devil. You know your number. When you try to do good, evil is always where? Right there. Right there. Knocking at your door, calling you on the phone, sending you a letter, sending you a text. Yeah. Always there. Sometimes you just need to sit at home and turn everything off. When you try to do good, just focus on doing good because you know evil is a ring away, ring a ling a ling away. All right? All right. Go ahead. For the end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin mm -hmm. and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. So the fruit you get, because we're going to talk about fruit. The fruit you get leads where? To eternal life. Leads to what else? Sanctification. Leads to the process. The fruit you get. So, I want y'all to take this in order. It said the fruit you get, read that part from right again. The fruit you get. Oh, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. So, the fruit you get leads you to where? The process. Sanctification. Sanctification. And in the process of being sanctified, it, it leads you to what? Eternal, Eternal life. life. So in other words, you're given the fruit before you even start the process. You don't do the process to get the fruit. You're being processed with the fruit and through the fruit. And that's, and that's the key. Sometimes we sometimes we just get a little bit confused because, because we, we got this fruit thing and there's different meanings of fruit. But but what, what Paul is trying to tell you is you've been given everything in salvation that you need to walk through the process. Because the Holy Spirit has been deposited where? Within you. Within you. Right? Okay. So you have this fruit. All right, now let's go ahead and go, go ahead and finish up and let's go to seven. So we're going to talk about fruit. For the wages of sin is death, <coughs> but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus mm -hmm. our Lord. Mm -hmm. Or do you not know, brothers, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law is binding on a person only as long as he lives? Mm -hmm. For a married woman is bound by law to her husband while he lives, but if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law, and if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Okay. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may know, so that you may belong to another, to him who have been raised from the dead in order that we may bear fruit for God. Stop. I'm going to stop right there as far as our main passage. So now we get this fruit. We're sanctified with the fruit. And then we have eternal life. Those are positionings. But while we're going through the process, we also bear more fruit for who? You just read it. What did it say? You bear fruit for who? God. For God. Look down, not up. You bear fruit for God. So in the process, you are re, 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 you're, you're duplicating yourself this fruit over and over again for God. And you take the fruit that you get for God, and what do you do with it? What do you think you do with it? Share it with each other. Share it with each other. And share it with who? And who else? Instead of each other, who else? Outside. 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 The lost people. <laughs> the lost people. The lost people get to share in your fruit. Okay? Let's go to uh, John chapter 15, verse 1, to see where this fruit comes from. We already said it, but we need to back it up with scripture. John 15 and 1. Start at 15 and 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, 
he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Stop. So, the only way for us to stay fruitful is to what? Abide. Abide. In who? In Christ. Y'all got to get this? Y'all got to get this? You got to abide in Christ. Because if you don't abide in Christ, you will not produce any fruit. If you do not participate actively in your sanctification process, you're, you might be fruitless. Okay? You have to yield. You have to be cultivated by the Holy Spirit. So he says you have to abide to produce this fruit. So now our next question is, what the heck is this fruit? Go to Galatians 5 and 22. Because we need to find out what this stuff is. That God says that, that, that we have once we get saved. So if you don't experience this, see this is, this is the thing. Now it's going to tell you what this fruit looks like or basically what you should experience if you got the fruit. Amen. Amen. The God, word of God is so good Amen. to me. Amen. I don't know about to y'all, but it's good to me. Amen. Amen. It is good to me. Go ahead. Amen. This is what you should experience. So at 5 and 22, y'all know this passage. Go ahead. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, Self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Stop, stop. So against such things, there is no law. There is nothing that man has written that overrides the fruit of the Spirit. And your first thing that you will want to search out, because he said he gave it to you, we read that back in Romans, is this fruit of the Spirit, the love, joy, peace. So, so in your life, as you go through life, you should be searching for all of these things. Not one, don't separate them because you need them all. Working interchangeably with each other. Love, joy, peace. See, see, you can't do the work of God unless you love. You can't do the work of God unless you get peace because the waves and the people and the giants are going to come and you're going to need the love to look past that and the peace of God to deal with it. And you might have to long suffer with some people while they're going through, while you're trying to help them see God in you. But how can they see the God in you when you don't have any love, and you don't have any joy, and you don't have any peace, and you're not willing to long suffer? You willing to say, I'll do this, but not that. <laughs> and God said, if you're not willing to do that, you ain't got none of this. A question. Go ahead. Is that why it's called the fruit of the Spirit? There is nine listed. And it's called fruit instead of fruits. Yes. The fruit of the Spirit is like a good old Mississippi watermelon with a bunch of seeds in it. <laughs> Every bite you take, there's another seed. Okay? That's what it is. You can't get around it. Now, you go buy a fake watermelon that don't have no seeds in it. But that ain't, that ain't the way God made it. That's right. <laughs> uh, uh, FYI, be careful eating fruit that God didn't make. That, 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 that MGO, whatever they call it, fruit that, that look real good but don't have no seeds in it. That 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 thing is is engineered by man. That ain't God. Okay, it may you may like not spitting out seeds, but I want someone with some seeds in it. It's supposed to have it. Cause that's how God made it. So let's go over fruit of the spirit again. Read that again. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. Faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. This is how you experience God in that. I, I can't emphasize that enough. If you love, you, got, you are ready for the fight if you have learned how to tap into what God has given you. Again, we learned that it is already in you. You get it when you get saved. Now, your job is to participate in the process that brings it from that moment out into your life so others can see. What did the Bible say? They are no, we'll, the people will know, the outside people will know that we belong to Jesus by the way we what? Love each other. So there's the love. 
What did Paul say? If we don't have love, love we don't have anything. Right. He said, even if I talk with the tongues of angels, so that puts out the heaven that I do, but that throws that out the window. It says, even if I had all the knowledge, that means I know Genesis to Revelation verbatim. It throws that out the window. Because if I don't have the fruit of the Spirit to dispense God's word, then something's wrong. Okay? Back like McCurley said, you know, because I was hard, people misunderstood my seriousness as being mean. But God had to say, how can they hear me if they can't get past you? Yeah, how can they hear me? And, 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 it's, and the biggest problem with most people, Avon, is that you can't get past who they are to see God. In the sense of you looking at them, with, and then you got see getting the getting the getting the spirit, getting the fruit. You don't look at people in the flesh. You look at people in the spirit. And see, when I see Avon, I see the spirit of Avon. I see, God, like somebody said, she's one of God's children. So I need to look at her in the spirit. It has nothing to do with what she do. It has something to do with what God has for her. And she couldn't be coming here unless God ordained her to come here to get something from us. See, when people walk in here, no matter who they are, when you walk in here, you're not here by accident. God don't have accidents. He has purpose. Amen. God has no accidents. There's no, God don't go, oh, oh I didn't know that was going to happen. <laughs> no. Even though we don't know and we don't understand God's purpose. How can we honor Janelle realizing that we need to get on the ball to get people saved because we don't know when somebody at that 50 point mark no matter how old they are. Because let's say it was they, let's say a person was 10 and left her at 12. When they was 10 they was 80% done. But our job is to act like tomorrow is the day, right? Yeah. Our job is to tell people how much God loves them as if the next second, like he gonna bust up heaven in, in, in the next hour, and you gotta catch this plane. You gotta be, you wanna be caught up in the, in the because what's gonna be left is gonna be chaos. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So yeah, we we need to we understand that Jesus is the vine to which we receive the Holy Spirit, which brings the fruit, which we are sanctified in and through for God, for others, and. And, and we need all of it. And our experiences are in that realm. Love, joy, peace. So if you're confused, you're not in the spirit. If you're scared, you're not in the spirit. Now, those are natural things that happen to man, right? Yeah. But we're not talking about what's natural to man. We're talking about what's supernatural to the new creature that, you live, that lives in you. You got to feed that creature. That creature, can't, that creature can't go off of what happened when you got saved. That creature needs some food. The way you feed your that creature is through your soul, and you need to feed your soul the word of God. Amen. That, that's all I focus on. Feed, 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 feed. God will work out the, all the intricate details of your life. I am no wiser. I am no more wiser to the world than, than you guys are when it comes to things. Only thing I do is I just try to trust God, look at it God's way. A lot of y'all got a lot, y'all older than me, y'all got a lot like more spirits than me, y'all did more things than me. Again. So. So. And y'all say that to me. So. The key now is the word of God. Let her play. She play. She play. The baby don't bother me. Let her talk. She in church. She, I don't, that don't bother me. She might be talking to God right now. Say, is he talking right, God? Amen. James. Go to James 3.17. James 3.17. James 3.17. Let's see. But the wisdom. Go ahead. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, Full of mercy and good fruits, <laughs> impartial and sincere. So now we we, hear, we saw peace in that peaceable. Mm -hmm. So even if you have wisdom, you need the fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. You cannot have wisdom without the fruit. You know what the fruit of the spirit allows you to do? Look at things from different perspectives. 
other than your own selfish one. It's, it, 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 I'll give you an example. It, it's like you get a flat tire. You know to go get a jack to change your flat tire. And the jack is normally wherever the spare tire is. Now, you can get out there and change it and have a crank. Old-fashioned crank. But they make better ones now that you just put under there and you can jack your car up just like at the shop. Or you can go ahead and have a plan where you make a phone call and the man come and change your tire. Different perspectives, different ways to handle the same problem. But you have to learn that that's available to you. The same thing with God. You, you, what you're learning is when you're walking under the fruit of the Spirit that it produces this thing called peace, love, joy, that you can look at things from a peaceful perspective. You can look at things from a joyful perspective. You can look at things from a loving perspective. You can look at things from a long-suffering perspective. You will look at things as God looks at things as what's needed to solve that issue. But that's a process. You have to mature into that. It doesn't happen overnight. It happens because you stay in the Word. It happens because you meditate on His Word day and night. All right. Let's go to Matthew 3 and 8. Bear fruit in keeping with repentance. Bear fruit in keeping with repentance. This is what John the Baptist was trying to tell the Pharisees when they were coming to be baptized. He said, you're coming to participate in a ceremony, but you haven't even repented yet. So one of the fruits of the Spirit, it will cause you to what? Repent. Well, Romans 2 and 4 says, don't you know the goodness of God should lead you to repentance? So in the fruit of the Spirit, one of the things that, that you should have is a repentant heart. And a repentant heart is godly sorrow, but a repentant heart is also saying again, like I always say, my way is wrong, God, your way is right. I've changed my mind, I'm going to follow you. This is a sanctification process. The further you go, the more you should follow. You should be lagging behind due to your disobedience. Because what caused you to, to, to be disobedient, uh, the, the lag behind is disobedience, simple disobedience. You don't want to do what God say. You want to continue to, you want to mix a little bit of what you know to, with God's word, a little bit of what they told you on TV and with God's word. And you want to mix what you heard Creflo say and, and Jake's and all them. And then you come to church and mix what I say, and then you form your own religion. That's how religions form. Everybody get a little peace. And then they got their own, and they form a religion. Yeah, they form a religion. Instead of really going in God's word as yeah. scripture by scripture. Yeah. And they, allow it, the Holy Spirit to the, lead and guide you. The Bible says if we all got this love, joy, peace, the Bible says we should be all saying the same thing. We should all be saying the same thing. Style may be different, but the same thing nonetheless. So we need to do something to repentance. So the fruit should, should put us in a position to repent. Let me see where I want to go from here. There's a whole bunch of scriptures that was good. I just like. Okay, go to Psalms 1 and 3. One, three. Now, we said that Jesus is the true vine, and then you say he's the true vine, and he is what? He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. So in other words, as you go through the seasons, the sanctification process, you are like a tree planted by the water. What water? The living water. And what happens when you're planted by the tree or tapped into the true vine? You will yield what? Fruit. When? In season, in the process. Not one minute before, not one minute after the process. Hey. Hey. Oh. Oh. Yeah. That's my baby. You preaching now? Yep. Go to Matthew 12 and 31. We almost done. Matthew 12 and 31. Matthew 12, 31. 
Therefore, I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven people, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Mm -hmm. Keep going. And whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, mm -hmm. either in this age or in the age to come. Keep going. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. Stop. Read it again. Make what? Either? Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. So in other words, the tree that's planted by the water can produce either good fruit or bad fruit, but it can only produce the fruit of the kind of tree that it is. Right. Right. Uh -oh. You caught that. That's good. You don't, you don't, I'm an apple tree. I can't produce oranges. Only the fruit that's. Oh, I can only produce the fruit of the kind of tree that I am based upon the seed that has been sown into my heart. Which is the word of God. Which is the word of God. So if I am under the word of God and I got the fruit of the spirit, I am like a tree planted by this living water. One, and I'll produce this fruit. But I can't produce this fruit until I go back to Romans 6 and not be a slave to sin no more. Mm. See, when you're a slave to sin, you're a different kind of tree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And we're all set slaves. Amen. And we are born a different kind of tree. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But then we are grafted into the true vine. And if anybody done any culture, when you graft something, it becomes what you grafted into. Have you ever planted peppers, hot peppers, and, 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 and cucumbers side by side? Mm -hmm. And the cucumber takes on the hotness of the pepper. Yeah, they grow on it. it grows on it, and, and the flavor of it will grow in it. Mm -hmm. See, this is the thing. The closer we get to God, we begin to, the sanctification process gives us God's flavor. Hallelujah. That sweet aroma. Hallelujah. It is not about walking around here floating and casting out demons and devils. It's about living a life that's holy before the world and people can see that you're different. Hallelujah. It's not about how you dress, per se. You know, it's not about how you dress, per se. But the pants will come up and the dresses will go down and you go about your life. Okay? And the hats will come off eventually. But the, but the thing about it is, we have to be such peaceable, loving people yes. Yes. that a person will see that we don't care what you look like. We know what God can do because he did it to us. Hallelujah. Again, saints, you should pinch yourself. I pinch myself. How are we here? How did we come together? What? What? How did God move all of us from different parts of this St. Louis metropolitan area and around the world to come together. I, I'm just at all at God and the way he do stuff because I didn't see it coming. Jackie came through through Anthony. I didn't, I, I didn't know Jackie. Jackie saw my father, kind of knew my father, but you didn't know me. Carolyn came to the Bible study. Y'all came to Praise Tabernacle through Eartha. You came because of Vera. You came because of her. I didn't see none of that. Do you too? Yeah, but she but she came to the Bible study. But what, what I'm trying to point out is, is that if you truly look at how God moves, it's true to His word. He moves mysteriously. He moves in ways we can't imagine. Mysterious. He will tear down to bring together. Mysterious. Jackie comes to listen to him. Did you, you didn't hear me preach? Did you? You listen to Anthony, but you had questions for me. Who's right there? I, let's get, we talk right there. And then she started coming. And she started hanging out with us. We thinking she's part of the ministry. We like assuming she walks up here and do an invitation. And everybody jaw drop like, huh? But she did what I would love everybody to do. Sit. Listen. And learn. And see if I'm telling you the truth or not. Am I pointing to me or am I pointing to God? You know, I don't have nothing of what these other pastors got. 
But I know what I do have that they supposed to have is this word. The true word, the truth. Because it's the truth that sets you free. It's the truth that 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 helps you overcome the obstacles. It's not my imagination. And I got a great imagination. But I've learned over the years that my imagination didn't do nothing but send me the penitentiary. <laughs> to me, God. But God knew that was what I took. <laughs> what I, he but knew he was he used what was bad and turned it into good. So now, the challenge is, Avon, if you're full of the Holy Ghost and Spirit, you got the fruit of the Spirit, why are you letting your past hold you hostage? Choices? Why are you making a choice to let your past hold you hostage? Choices. The worst thing the saints go through, one of the worst things they can do, is, is allowing their past to hold them hostage and say to themselves, they still not good enough. You were never good enough. You never was good enough. You and you will never be good enough. Whatever God gives you, you didn't earn it. Amen. It's by His grace. By grace. So don't let your past and people who hold your past against you to, to make you feel less than when God say, I die for everybody who feels less than. Yeah. My job is because I have the fruit of the Spirit in me, the love, joy, peace, is to continue to tell both of you that. Amen. It ain't about how you feel, it's about what you know. Isn't it that people get tripped, get tripped up on feelings? Yeah, because feelings are meant to trip us up. <laughs> I'm in my feelings, but you, you, but you, but, but, but again, what I'm saying to them is, no matter what decision you made yesterday, if you come to Christ today, He done threw all that in the trash can. It's all in the past. Now, does that say you're gonna make not gonna make all good decisions from that day forward? No. We read that you have to be committed to the teaching. Now we read in six, right? To the teaching. That's why the teaching is more important than the preaching because the teaching leads to better prayers. The teaching leads to better worship. The teaching leads to a better life. Because you're sanctified. And you're submitting. Sanctified, you're submitting. When you're being taught and submitting to the teaching, you're being sanctified through the teaching. And we have some great people around us, with us, for us, as much as we got anything else, the one thing they say about this church is that we love each other. So we got it all. Because Paul said, if you got love, you got everything. So the fruit of the Spirit corporately is here. The fruit of the Spirit is in each individual here. I love the fact when I see it blossom. I don't say much no more because I know when I compliment y'all, then y'all go left. <laughs> I don't know what it's about. But I, mean, I don't know what it's about human nature. I don't know what it's about human nature, but it's like when you compliment somebody, as soon as they get complimented, it's like, Whoo. I don't know if it get big, but I know y'all go left. It's just, it's just like this. When, you know, y'all did real good today. Now, watch. If I say we're going to have a test next time, I'm going to ask a question. Y'all be like, cricket. 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 Huh? But when I, when I just talk to y'all, Y'all, it just comes, and that's what I'm going to say. Be, y'all should look at yourselves and say, look how much I've grown. In the Word. In the Word of God. In the Word of God, we've grown. So, again, we're going to stop there. And uh, <laughs> we're studying about fruit. Hello, this is Pastor Jay with Walk of Truth Radio Podcast, and I want to invite all those within the St. Louis metropolitan area and around the world to come worship with us every Sunday at 8 a.m. at the Universal Church of Jesus Christ Building, located at 2301 Wallace Avenue, Overland, Missouri, 63114. We also have our Rescue Addiction Recovery Program on Mondays from 7 p.m. until 8 p.m. Our Bible studies are held 
every Tuesday at 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. You can also catch us, follow us, and subscribe to us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. Please come out and join us, follow us, follow our podcast, but most of all, get saved, sanctified, and full of the Holy Ghost, and always remember, walk in truth. And if you'd like to contact me by email, you can do so by going to walkintruthministries at yahoo.com or w-i-t-m-i-n at yahoo.com. Thank you and bless you, and we look forward to worshiping and fellowshipping with you. Peace.